The final thing for consideration is what I call stability. Now, stability has to do with not just evenness throughout in tone color, not just evenness throughout in resistance and response, but stability and dynamic changes. You find this is a special problem when you're trying to play in the high register. When you try to play, uh, say, a big forte sound in the high register or a soft sound in the high register. With the soft sound, you find that uh, there's not enough support and, and the clarinet will easily undertone. I'm talking about notes above the staff. No, uh, not just in the third register, but immediately above the staff you'll find that they grunt or undertone uh, quite easily. And the other thing about stability is when you take a note, say a note immediately above the staff, and you begin to crescendo on it from piano to forte and louder, you'll find that the aspects of the clarinet tone of pitch, color, and shape, those are the three internal aspects of the clarinet tone. Uh, you'll find that the envelope that sort of holds the, the, the pitch color and shape together will begin to rupture, that the pitch will begin to sag, that the color will begin to brighten very quickly, uh, and the shape will begin to shatter or spread. We say the sound spreads, unless you make some kind of adjustment with your air or embouchure, tongue position, whatever. Uh, and, but a clarinet that's very, very stable should give you uh, should require minimal adjustment uh, in order to keep stability in pitch, color, and shape in the dynamic changes. These are again very very important qualities, and especially important in professional clarinets. The performance of the clarinet should be tested in all these categories with all the skill, knowledge, and ability and sensitivity that you can bring to bear on it. It's also helpful to have someone who really is a super good player if you don't feel confident in evaluating the clarinet. You have to look beyond the eye candy of just how the clarinet appears, how shiny it is, how, how beautiful the key work and finish is. That all has to go past you because the clarinet is not for that. It's not something you hang on the wall. The clarinet performs and it must do things and it must do things, a professional clarinet must do things on a very high level. You have to go beyond the claims of the manufacturers and the, and the advertising and the hype that you're often hit with. And you must go beyond the superficial idea of asking, how does it sound? To get in depth with the clarinet, you need to test in all these categories. And only when a clarinet meets the a high level of a, a standard, a high standard in all these categories, is it worthy of being called a truly professional clarinet. Otherwise, the clarinet's mostly just a candidate for Bennigan's. The better it looks, the, more it'll, the better it'll look on Bennigan's wall. And that's my message to you, and I hope this helps you in deciding which clarinets that you want to play, in testing clarinets, and um, getting a good deal, okay? Because there are good deals out there, and there are not such good deals out there. There are uh, clarinets that are overpriced and underperform, and clarinets that are, you might say, underpriced and perform amazingly well. And if you use your tools of evaluation and test the clarinets in these categories, you'll be able to discern the good from the bad from the ugly. And with that, I'll wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, and a happy holiday, and I'll see you in the new year.